Hello everyone, welcome back to MTech, and you know it's going to be a good day today because we are doing stuff to the E36. Uh, however, I noticed when looking at this car that there's a noticeable amount of rock chips up here and down here and I mean I'm gonna come to the door here, there's a good sized nick right there and a lot of other mishaps that this car has had over the course of you know almost 235,000 miles now. So we're gonna sort those things out and I'm gonna show you do's and don'ts about touching up your car. There's a lot of information out there online, some of which is true, some of which is not true. I'm gonna go into that today. <clears throat> but first, let's start out with the things that you will need. All right, so to start out with things that I'm gonna be using, different grits of sandpaper, silver rust-oleum. This is for the, this goes along with the sandpaper. This is for the rust on some of the rock chips. If your rock chips do not have rust, then these two things are not gonna be important to you. Although it's not a bad idea as a preventive measure anyway, in case there's rust that you can't see because it'll start bubbling up underneath. So not a bad thing to do, but not required. Paint brushes. Or this, which is what I'm gonna be using most of the time. I'm gonna use the paint brushes for the rust oleum. This is a touch up brush. This is really what you want to be using uh, because it'll kind of give like the, the streakless finish more of like a, like a dab. You really want these. I'll link some in the description below using an Amazon Affiliates link. So it'd help the channel out if you click that in the description below. But anyway, however you can get your hands on these, these are really good, although not required. And then obviously you have your actual paint. This is paint that I mixed. It is color coded to my car. I picked out the variant, variants and everything. Although you don't really have to get in that, that in depth with this. You can just find on Amazon, whatever your car's paint coat is, just grab that and it'll be fine. It's only touch up paint. All right, so with all those things listed out, let's get in a couple do's and don'ts. So let's come here first. Things like this, rust, like starting rock chips, don't paint over that because what'll happen is over time, it'll start to bubble up and can pop and then you'll have a bigger spot or the, in a better case, which is what you hope's happen, Hope happens is the paint will flake off, not to redo it. Uh, either way, you'll just be wasting your time. That's why you sand it off and then you paint the rust oleum over it because that seals it off and then you can paint your paint over that. We come around back here. Another do not is like this. This is just in the clear coat. Don't paint over clear coat because then you will ruin the bumper. I guess you'll, you'll ruin that spot because there will be no getting the paint off of there without just destroying the clear coat anyway. So you'll have to repaint the whole bumper and you'll wish that you hadn't touched it. Again, a lot of these things, they're not like big deals, but most people don't know these things. So that's why I'm telling you now. And anything like this, like this is tree sap, don't paint on that because it'll just flake off and could potentially leave spots. Like here, that was tree sap. Once the tree sap actually comes off or if you can get it off, then you can paint over it. That's 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 good. And then last, do not, if you come up here, there's a paint scratch. Or not a paint scratch, clear coat scratch. I don't even know if the camera will pick it up, but it's a very like fine scratch here in the paint or the clear coat. Anytime there's clear coat, you don't want to paint over it. Kind of like I mentioned over in the rear, because then paint isn't going to stick and it's going to flake off because the paint doesn't want to stick to your clear coat. The whole point of clear coat is that nothing does stick to it and it protects paint underneath. Now with all those do nots, let's talk about, let's talk more positive. That's something you should do. You should wash your car. It's not the biggest deal in the world if you don't wash it. Or maybe you can get some detail spray and you can clean it off that way like your rock chips like over here this. You can kind of see this person probably didn't clean it and then that paint just flaked away. <clears throat> not the biggest thing in the world but the cleaner your car is the better it will come out and the more it will stick and the more happy you'll be with it. So now with those things out of the way Let's get to the front end where I'll show you some rock chips up there. All right, so now we're at the front end. Excuse the camera angle, I'm working with space here. So these are the most common kind of rock chip. So I'll bring you guys over here. So these rock chips are just kind of generally, well, they're from rocks. There's a small amount of rust starting. This, these rock chips are really old because the car is old. So there's a little bit of rust starting these. I'm probably gonna have to attempt to sand out every single one of these. I'm gonna show you, this guy is a reference, so you see him now. That's what he looks like before, and I'll show you what he's gonna look like after I'm done with it. So to start off, I'm gonna take my 80 grit sand block here. I'm just gonna kinda use one of the corners to 
sand out the rock chip very carefully, mind you. 80 grit's really good for getting rust off, and the sand block is really nice because you can use the edge and you can get very precise with it. They also make little like sanding, like almost, I'll call them like sanding picks, or it's kind of like a paintbrush and it's very precise, you can get in there. If you, those are also pretty good. I just have the black with me right now, so this is what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna start off by very lightly just going back and forth inside the hole. And this is a great example where I screwed up. I'm using the sand block, be careful. So there's kind of, you can see those little scratches now, kind of by the rock chip. Sometimes that happens. It's unavoidable, it's going to happen. All you can do is just try to mitigate it. But with the sandpaper, you want to try to let the sandpaper do the work. And obviously you're not going to get all of it out. I've probably gone as far as I'm going to go with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rust lamb and always shake up your paint before you use it. Okay, so now it's all shook up. I got my rust lamb open here. So now I have the smallest paintbrush from the kit of paintbrushes I have. And I'm not just going to dip it into here. Actually, what I'm going to do is there's a little bit left in the cap here. So I'm going to grab a little bit from, I already grabbed too much. <laughs> you do not need a lot to go over rock chips. Is I'm going to come down here and very lightly just tap it over the rock chip. And with Rust-Oleum, you want to go slightly farther out than where the chip actually is because it will seal it off, so if there's a little bit you missed, then the Rust-Oleum will do the work for you and make sure that the rust doesn't bubble up over time and it'll look worse. So now I got the Rust-Oleum painted on here. I'll show you what I did here. You see now it's just lightly coated over and they want you to wait at least an hour. Uh, they say two to four hours for it to fully cure but you don't need it to fully cure to apply another coat. Say 30 minutes minimum is when it's dry. Uh, wait up to an hour before you actually go over it again with your real paint. So now I'm gonna do this for all these rock chips up here because they all have rust in them. If you have a rock chip that does not have rust in it, then you don't have to bother with this. You can just paint right over it with your touch-up paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you another example uh, without this. So now if we come over here, you can see I actually did this the other day. Well, not the other day, but when I put these tail lights in, I kind of scraped this up here. So now I'm just gonna get my paint on this guy and then I'm gonna go over this. So because there is no rust here, you can just go over it and be perfectly fine. I apologize for the camera quality. It doesn't look that great when it's very close up, but you get the idea. I'm gonna go over that now. And then I'll show you what it looks like after. And you can see that looks way better now. It's a little messy, but it's better than bare metal. And another reason, I mean, if you come here, you can't even see it. The reason for that is because that will start to rust if you leave it as bare metal. So it's better to hit it now than to wait later. And then it's infinitely worse for yourself because now that the paint's over, it won't rust. If you really want to go an extra step too, you can buy a cheap clear coat and go over it. I think that's overkill but it's better than nothing and uh, it looks all right and much cheaper than actual paint work. So now I'm gonna go around the rest of the car and I'm gonna do this, but this should have given you guys the general idea of how to touch up your car and I'll show you guys what these spots look like and the front end looks like when I'm all done, it'll look great. Okay, so it is a new day. I wanted to let the paint sit for at least 24 hours and cure, it's been sitting for a little over and I could not be happier. These. You can't even see them. I mean, look at that. And actually, just for testing purposes, I left one of the right here. I just put Rust-Oleum on that. I did not actually put the paint match paint over it. If you have an Arctic Silver uh, BMW, I will link the Rust-Oleum in the description below as well. That's, uh, it's almost a perfect match, actually. And over here on the door, you can't even notice it. I mean, it, there's another one there. It blends right in. I'll come around back here. You wouldn't even know. So that wraps up the video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, 
subscribe, like, there will be more E36 videos, more tutorials, whatever, I already got another video planned, and uh, Connor's car should be done soon. But anyway, uh, keep it fresh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.